guys, how's it going? Today I'm in uh, Lac St. John in my hometown in Quebec. And uh, this lake behind here is called Lake Kinogami. And uh, I want to show you guys, there's a nice hiking trail that goes all along this lake. And it's a very long lake. And I want to show you part of the trail. And then I'm going to try to find a special plant called Indian Cucumber Root. It's uh, Medeola virginiana. And it's a cool, uh, cool wild edible that we have here uh, in the eastern uh, North America. So uh, yeah, if we don't find the plant, then it'll just be nice scenic views and a beautiful summer day. So thanks for joining me again. Thanks for tuning in. I just parked here, eating some good old poutine from Quebec with some fresh cheese curds. So good. Give me some some energy. And uh, yeah, the sign right is right here. I'll probably walk for half an hour, maybe an hour, depending how bad the bugs are. There's a lot of black flies. We call them mouche noir and uh, mosquitoes. So we'll see. It's a little bit windy, so it might not be too bad. I'll bring my bug net anyways. So yeah, I'll just eat this up and then head to the trail. So I've got to do about 1.5 kilometers in this uh, quad trail, but already you can see the typical older growth forests, rich soils of the east. There is some nice yellow birch, there's some nice ash trees, black ash, nice firs, maples, really nice forests really nice so lots of mosquitoes yeah you can see very easily here the difference between the white birch which is white and gray yellow birch yellow golden color another white birch there I can't stop very long because the mosquitoes just attack me you like my flesh so I just gotta keep moving. I could put on my my netting hood, but I can't see anything. I'd have to though. Oh, nice little creek. Back there, that's a nice Canadian shield boulder. It's about 10 feet high, really cool. And this plant is a little bit old now. It's losing its flower, but it's uh, called trillium. In French, it's a tree, and it's a really cool plant too from the east here. There's a few there. Really cool. Still looking for the the Indian cucumber root. Don't see it yet. You guys see guys this is what I mean by Canadian shield beautiful rock face just really nice all moss really cool check out check out this side too just like really nice
a beautiful maple tree. I believe it's a sugar maple. There's a few different types of maple here. Red maple, silver maple, sugar maple, but I think this is a sugar maple. Just massive. Look at that, eh? Like, this region, big trees like this, sugar maples, and uh, also ash trees and uh, yellow birch trees. They're getting more and more rare because a lot of people in the past cut them for making fields for agriculture or for firewood. Such a great firewood. Gives out a lot of heat, but uh, when you go higher up, this to get here, there's kind of a little mountain. So it's not good agricultural soil um, and it's hard access. So you get these old growth forests and luckily you didn't get any uh, any forest fires here lately. It's a really, really nice, nice forest. All right, let's keep searching. Okay, I gotta concentrate here. This is where I came from. This is where I'm going. So I'm looking for the elusive Indian wild cucumber root. So, start looking. Looks like I gotta follow the, the yellow flags. That's easy enough. That's how guys get lost, they're busy talking to the camera, or busy looking for plants, busy looking for mushrooms, and then they venture in a trail, and then they're all lost. I found these plants here, like something like six, seven years ago. So it's been quite a while. Now I see a lot of salsaparilla. This is salsaparilla here. This one's kind of ugly. A um, few different types of maples. See how the leaves are different? This maple, this maple, this maple. But uh, some ferns. I think there's a viewpoint here and I had found them near the viewpoint somewhere. Oh, actually, might have something back here. Nope. Guys, I just found them. They're right here. This is this is it right here. Now when it has the two when it has the two platforms, so there's always a, there's a one unique, one unique stem comes up about, uh, I don't know, eight, 10 inches, maybe 10 inches. And then you have a platform with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight leaves. And then you have another stem about three, four inches high with three stems there and a cool little flower I'll go around. This one has a nice flower. This one has a nice flower too. I'll try to show you the flower. <clears throat> there it is. So that's the flower there. The yellow little yellow flower. Very cool. And the thing with this plant is that the, uh, see you can see it now that I only have this plant in focus, isolating it, it's, uh, the roots are edible. Now this little population here, there's only a few. I believe that these ones, the first year, I believe that the first year they don't do the, the big uh, second stem. 
Like this guy's got his second stem, but this one doesn't. So there's quite a few, but this is a plant that takes uh, quite a while to, to grow and to repopulate. So this is the kind of plant that you don't want to just harvest for pleasure or for the fun of it. It's more of a survival plant. You want to learn it and you want to know it so that it's another food source. Now it's not as abundant as cattails or something like that, but if you're really in a rich moist forest, this is a plant that has a really nice uh, root and that'll give you some calories. Now I'm gonna keep walking and see if I can't find different populations of the plant because the thing is when you gather a plant and uh, you take the root out, that kills the, that specific one plant. Now I'm not gonna like feast and eat all of these. For the video and for education purposes, I am gonna pick one and I'll show you guys and I'll taste it. Um, but I rarely, rarely do this. I pretty much never do this. I did it once like six years ago to learn the plant and then see what it looked like. So I'm gonna look here around, keep walking to see if I can't find another spot where there's more of them. And then we'll pick one and uh, eat it. See this one here, you can see it's got that stem and then that flowering head. But uh, the other one beside it does not have that. And that's because it's the same plant. It's just, it's different, but, but it's easier to identify when you have the two stems, right? Like the, the one single stem, but you have the second level there. Man, these mosquitoes are so bad. Let me show you my hand here. See how bad they are. There's like freaking 20 of them there on my hand. Ah! so bad and then these ones are bigger they're more mature plants but I'll keep walking here and see what else we can find this plant is kind of cool because I saw it in a survivor man episode it's uh, I think it's in episode one or two Les Stroud he's in uh, northern Ontario there in Tamagami <coughs> I, think I swallowed a mosquito and uh, yeah he's He's lost doing his survivor man thing and then he finds this plant and uh, eats the roots. He can see it quite well. He explains it as well. It's the Mediolia virginiana. But that's not where I first learned it. Where I first learned it, I was reading an old magazine about hunting and fishing that my dad had in, in Quebec. They're called the uh, Sentier Chasse Pêche. And they had like three, four cool uh, survival plants in there and then that was one of them and I always wanted to find some but uh, here in Lac St. John it's really the northern area where they grow and uh, they grow a lot more like in the southern Quebec but uh, yeah I was pretty happy when I found them here I see a few other uh, other ones here not very many though. Let's keep walking. Look at this beauty. Nice white birch. This would be like perfect for a birch bark canoe. It's just like awesome. It's just like super straight. Nice size to it. No knots. There's lots of them around. You just have to search. Really nice. Got to have no knots for at least 16 feet, 17 feet, nice. Another nice maple there. Yellow birch are getting rare too in the region. A nice spot here, massive one. This guy's got to be a few hundred years old, a couple hundred at least, or something like that. It's massive. And this is a uh, this is some great wood, the ash tree, for uh, making bows and uh, making paddles as well. Nice flexible wood and. Uh, 
you would gather without knots, you would gather the bottom of the tree, the trunk, whatever size you need, six, seven feet. And then you would split it, just like I split the, uh, uh, the cedar logs or the spruce logs for making canoe ribs. You would split it like that. And then you'd have your, your piece of wood for your bow. It's just a beautiful flower, big. Don't want to damage it or anything, but see that there? It's got these nice big leaves. Beautiful. There's a nice really big one here, another spot. And there's a lot more of the, the smaller ones that don't have the, the second uh, leaf. Oh, look at this one here. He's really big. He's like massive. He's beautiful. Goes up. It's got to go up like twice the size of my cap. And then another there. And then look at these, these flowers. Beauty. Just really nice flowers there. So you got the top, the flowers, and the bottom there with one, two, three, four, five, seven leaves. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and gather one of these. This one doesn't have the two leaves, but it's the same plant. I just wanna show you the root. So I'm just digging it here. Maybe I should show you this angle instead. Wanna make sure that you get the actual plant that you're looking for. There it is. So you can see that, how it turns at a, a 90 degree. And then it has this nice, nice bulb on it. Really nice, and I didn't damage this one at all. So I think I'm gonna replant this one actually, not, uh, not eat them. I stepped on one back here that I broke the stem and it has the double, the double, uh, there you go. Okay, so I'll replant this guy. And he should survive there. Okay, so this is the one that I stepped on here, and it's got the, uh, the flower and the double leaves, so I'll show you guys this one. Just to show you what the root looks like. Like you can see, it's not very big. You'd have to gather quite a few to get a good uh, good eating. But uh, as a survival plant, this has a lot of carbohydrates, and it's a very good plant. Donc ça c'est le, le rhizome ici. So you see here, the root stalk rhizome is very small, but you know, you get a couple bites. And then you can see here, the leaves there with the flowers. You can't really um, mistake it for another plant, yet you have to have certain basics in uh, botany to identify it. Very cool. Okay, so I'm gonna eat this guy just to just to just gonna make sure it films because I'm not gonna gather two of them, just the one, just to kind of discuss the taste. I do have a little bit of water in my water bottle, 
So I'll just rinse it off there with a little bit of water, clean water. Should get some of the dirt off. I'll let you guys know what it tastes like. Bon appétit. Got a nice crispy taste to it. That's yeah, really good. Tastes uh I don't know if you can hear it, but it tastes like uh like a raw potato. But it's sweet, like it's got a sweet flavor to it too. good okay guys so I did take one plant don't tell anybody but a lot of hikers do walk on the plants and destroy the stems and whatnot so I don't think in a forest like this it's kilometers big it's not gonna it's not gonna eliminate the plant but like I said don't go and uh, gather a whole bunch like a whole bucket or something but really cool plant to know thought I'd share it with you guys Woo. yeah you can eat this plant uh, raw or cooked I think it would be just like a just like a potato it would be pretty good cooked but uh, in a forest like this and in, uh, in last drought too in Survivor Man, um, it was a forest that was quite abundant with them. It's, uh, it's, uh, you, you saw the environment when it was coming in, so it's rich soils, kind of like a lot of hardwoods, maples, yellow birches, things like that. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more on the trail and see if I can't find a nice uh, viewpoint of the lake, kind of like what I had at the uh, the entrance there of the trail where I did the intro of the video. But here, like it goes off, so I might have another nice viewpoint there. Just gonna go a little bit more for a walk and then slowly head back after. Oh, there's lots here. The more I kind of see them, the more I walk into the trail, the more I see some. Which is uh, which is good to see. See, there's a nice one there, 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 nice one there. Nice ones there, lots there. Yeah, so it's, it's not uh, every day that I come out here because I'm from Alberta. Well, I live now in Alberta, but this is my hometown. And I almost never come here in the summer, but I had to come for uh, some personal matters there with my family, so I thought I'd uh, take a little bit of a day of rest and come and explore the woodlands where where I was raised and uh, it's nice like I miss these nice eastern forests I love the Rocky Mountains as well in Alberta but it's not the same plants it's not the same smells the same environment <sighs> I was raised here so brings back a lot of memories it's quite nostalgic and uh, it's kind of it's kind of neat it's kind of bittersweet as well but 
Yeah. Glad I could show you a cool little area here. Let's try to find a nice viewpoint. Just hoping to see the lake down there. I hear uh, boats, but uh, no lake. No viewpoint. Keep going for a little bit on the trail. So nice. I gotta show you guys. There's less skeeters too. There's a little bit of wind here on the the mountain, but man, so nice. Look at that. Isn't that worth it, eh? Man, that's worth it. So nice. Really nice. Get a little bit of water and then uh, I'll head back. This is a nice, nice trail. I believe you can do it hiking and then you can stop overnight or do some overnighters on the way. I'd have to calculate, I'm not familiar with it. I'd have to look at it, see how many kilometers it is. And when you come up to the higher, higher altitudes, it's uh, it turns like this here. It's just like black spruce and uh, rocks, and then there's some Labrador tea, some Calmia. But lower, it's really nice. Those big trees, man. These mosquitoes are just like eating me so bad. Gonna grab a quick shot of water. Do a quick panorama for you guys to see the view real good and then I'll head back. Thanks guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah, click the like button. Just smash that like button and uh, smash that subscribe button and uh, yeah, see you guys soon. Cheers. Cheers guys, they're rock and roll. Ooh.